Tonight on News 30, the state capitol receives a white powder threat. And wildfires are a continuous threat to Oklahoma. Welcome to News 30. I'm Lindsay Skinner. And I'm Jake Nelson. News 30 is back for the spring semester and Jake Nelson will be joining me as lead anchor for this semester. We have plenty of new faces on desk and in our control room. Katie Gilbert and Tanner Messer are continuing their roles as producer and director of News 30. And News 30 will continue to be out in the Shawnee community, finding the stories that matter to Shawnee residents. We will also be expanding our audience to social media and can be found by searching at news 30 youtube at youtube.com at slash shawnee news 30 and facebook at shawnee news 30. we are truly excited for this next semester and we're glad you can join us the state capitol experienced an interesting day wednesday nicole smith has more the state capitol building was put on lockdown wednesday after letters containing an unknown white powder were hand delivered to the legislators during the afternoon. It was discovered Adam Daniels, head of the Oklahoma City Satanist Church, had delivered the letters. Daniels was gone by the time the building had been locked down and had no clue about the disturbance. News 30's very own Laura Hickman was actually in the office of Justin Wood, District 26 Republican representative for the Shawnee area, at the beginning of the incident. Laura, who had volunteered for Justin's re-election campaign from August to November, had only stopped in to say hi after the 2015 Rose Day rally being held at the Capitol that day. I was in Representative Shawnee Representative Justin Wood's office, and he opened an envelope from a Satanist group, and then he kind of got distracted and didn't open it, like take all the everything out that was inside of it. Then his legislative assistant opened it a little later, and when she did open it, white powder flew everywhere. Um, she didn't she didn't really do anything about it at the, at the moment but then someone else came into her office and said that the same thing had happened to her but hers smelled like had a terrible like pungent smell so we called security and for a time like I couldn't leave, Representative Wood couldn't leave and neither could his legislative assistant. We were just kind of stuck in the hall and then in between security leaving or the yeah, security leaving to get people to test the substance and you know take care of the whole thing. I snuck out of the Capitol building because I knew that it would be a long while, I suppose. And I was texting Justin throughout the ordeal or after the ordeal, and he said that they were on lockdown for two hours and envelopes were discovered in Representative Elise Hall's office and also Governor Mary Fallon's office. And after two hours, the lockdown was lifted on the Capitol. And as of Today, I think they, they don't know what the substance is, but they know that it is not harmful to anyone. And so they're just going to let it go for now. I'm Nicole Smith reporting. Mary Fallon gave her State of the State address on Monday. Guest reporter Tyler Henson has more. Yesterday, February 4th, Governor Mary Fallon delivered her State of the State address in a joint session of the Oklahoma legislature. After Governor Fallon also down. outlined her 2015 legislative and policy agenda with the hope of continuing Oklahoma's current economic growth and job creation. She outlined some of the restorations that Oklahoma has made in the last four years, including $150 million in education funds and improvements in transportation infrastructure that had been burdened with the crumbling roads and bridges. This legislature worked with me to invest over $1.6 billion since 2011 to address those shortcomings. And today, we have 390 structurally deficient bridges down from a height of over 1,100. And by the year 2019, it'll be down to zero. Other improvements include re-imaging Oklahoma's workers' compensation system. And that system has now reduced costs to Oklahoma businesses by 22% 
and also allow them to pump back in $200 million back into Oklahoma's economy. Fallon describes increased resources and funding for drug abuse treatment programs, improved services for abused and neglected children, and over 17,000 organizations in the certified healthy programs. And lastly, we successfully rebuild and grow stronger in the wake of natural disasters. Our people are known nationally and internationally as Oklahoma Strong. Fallon addresses Oklahoma's continuing problem of students not furthering their education and how she thinks this can be improved. Now one thing we can do now that doesn't require large sums of new money is to help strengthen the partnerships between our local businesses and schools where students can dual track their education and their work skills. Fallon also mentions a program she's planning on launching called Oklahoma Works that will point Oklahoma towards educational attainment. More information on this program is found at oklahomaworks.gov. Fallon also addressed the state's budget challenges regarding the General Reserve Fund, the main source of spending set by legislature each year, which is growing smaller. Fallon ended the address with her hopes of improving efficiency in programs and higher education. She also called both parties together in meeting these goals. This has been Tyler Henson reporting to you from News 30. After being knocked down late last year, the Ten Commandments Monument is back up. The monument was built in 2012 and paid for by Representative Mike Ritz as a donation to the state. This caused debates on whether or not a satanic monument should also be allowed. Last October, a man deliberately drove his car into the monument after claiming that Satan told him to damage it. Once the monument was destroyed, the satanic church said they would stop plans on their monument if the Ten Commandments wasn't rebuilt. Despite this, Representative Ritz had the monument restored, which was raised, which raised concern about a month ago on January 8th. There is still question on whether the monument should be allowed to stay because of its religious content on state government grounds. Your state superintendent of education, Joy Hoffmeister, is doing her best to make the changes. Oklahoma teachers will soon see a potential increase in pay and in the number of days of instruction days. Joy Hoffmeister said her five-year plan would provide Oklahoma teachers with a $5,000 pay increase over the 2012-2013 figures and add a five-day of instruction to the school year after five years. Hoffmeister is doing her best to implement changes to the educators in Oklahoma. The proposal is said to cost $150 million in its initial year which represents the requested $205 million budget increase to the Oklahoma State Board of Education. A potential increase in pay and instruction days could make all the difference in the teachers of Oklahoma's life. Pope Francis will have a historical visit this fall when he plans to visit the United States. House Speaker John Boehner made the announcement that the Pope will speak to lawmakers during his visit, which will make him the first Pope to ever speak before a joint meeting of Congress. Pope Francis's visit to the U.S. will be the first visit for him as Pope. Besides the Capitol, he will also be visiting Philadelphia and New York. The Hobby Lobby is almost completed on Kickapoo, but more is expected to be built alongside it next. Welcome back to News 30. The new Hobby Lobby on Kickapoo is nearing the end of construction. The owners are planning to hold a formal opening on February 27th. The new business is expected to offer up to 50 jobs to the community. Tim Berg, Executive Director of Shawnee of Economic Development Foundation, said he is hoping to see the community of Shawnee expand and bring new retail and industrial attraction. The recent construction is part of a local development plan that will take place during the spring. Shawnee residents can also expect a PetSmart, Ulta, Famous Footwear, and TJ Maxx in the near future. Just being the son of Billy Graham won't get me into heaven, says Franklin Graham. Franklin Graham spoke on January 26th and 27th at the 2015 State Evangelism Conference hosted by the Baptist General Convention of Oklahoma. The conference was held at First Southern Baptist Church in Dell City, Oklahoma. Here Franklin Graham was one of many important speakers. Franklin Graham is the president and CEO of Samaritan's Purse and Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Quote, the State Evangelism Conference will be a great time of equipping for the work of evangelism, encouraging the work of evangelism, and inspiration for the work of evangelism, end quote, 
said Mike Napier, BGCO's personal evangelism specialist, quote, this year we have had two men that have been used by God in some amazing ways across North America, end quote. The flu season is expected to continue through February and into March. Unfortunately, this season's flu vaccine isn't as effective as previous years. To create the vaccine, the CDC identifies three of strands of the virus that should be of the most common in the coming season. Vaccine manufacturers then create the vaccine. This year, a dramatic shift in the virus means that the vaccine is only about 30% effective. The most common flu virus this year is a strand of the H3N2 virus. It is most dangerously to the elderly. The CDC still recommends getting your flu shot. The vaccine can protect against some types of flus, and it can even make the new strand less severe. As always, wash your hands and beware of spreading germs. If you think you may have the flu, you can see your physician for antiviral treatment. These treatments can help you feel better sooner. Wildfires can blaze up suddenly, even in damp winter weather. Rain can actually be an enemy of firefighting. On Tuesday, fast-moving flames sprung up I-35 north of Guthrie. The cause of the fire is unknown, but potential causes include a cigarette or something dragging behind a car causing sparks. Last weekend's rain left the ground soft and muddy, even though the grass was still dry and dead. Fire trucks have trouble moving over the soft ground. The grass will remain dry for the next couple of months, so do your part to prevent wildfires. Last Sunday in Shawnee, Oklahoma, Highway Patrol Trooper Nicholas Dees was killed after being struck by a vehicle while responding to another accident. The accident occurred on Interstate 40 around 10 p.m. that evening. Dees and Trooper Keith Birch were investigating a collision involving an overturned semi on I-40. Dees was pronounced dead at the scene. Birch is in a serious condition at the University of Oklahoma Medical Center in Oklahoma City. Dees was the son of a retired trooper and had a lifelong connection with the OHP. Prayers and thoughts go out to families of Dees and Birch. The weather continues to be very unpredictable in Oklahoma. Nicole Smith has your weather next. The weather is changing, but it is still pretty cold. Here's Nicole Smith with your weekly weather update. Thank you, Lindsay. We've seen some ups and downs in the temperatures this past week, but get ready for a warming trend. Right now, we're at 40 degrees with light winds out of the south with clear skies. We topped out at 42 degrees today, which is a little below normal, but we should return to normal overnight with a low of 31. Across the state, we've seen highs anywhere from down to 35 in McAllister and Ponca City, all the way up to 47 in Oklahoma City and 48 in Woodward. Tonight, we should see lows in the upper 20s to the lower 30s. 31 here in Shawnee, as well as the Tecumseh area, and then down to 29 in Purcell and Holdenville. We will have clear skies all day tomorrow, starting at around 34 in the morning, and we should top around 63 at 5 o'clock. We'll be warming up quite a bit as we get into the weekend, reaching up to 75 on both Saturday and Sunday, and we should see a return of the clouds on Sunday. The warm temperatures should stick around into the rest of the week, then we'll see a cold front coming through early Wednesday, along with some rain. We'll get down to 59 on Wednesday, dropping down to 28 Wednesday night, and then only reach about 47 on Thursday. Overall, we will have a warmer pattern than we have seen this past week. That's all for weather this week. Here is Hannah Lounsbury with your arts and entertainment. I'm Hannah Lounsbury here with arts and entertainment. Coming up this weekend, our very own Heart of Oklahoma Exposition Center will be housing the Shawnee Gun Show. This event, promoted by GNS Promotions, provides a great opportunity to buy, sell, and trade both new and used guns. The show will be open on Saturday the 7th from 9 to 5 and Sunday the 8th from 9 to 4. Also this weekend, the Maybe Garer Museum of Art hosts acclaimed artist Michi Susan. The work of this Oklahoma City Artist and Governor's Arts Award winner will be in the museum from February 7th to March 22nd. For more information, visit www.mgmoa.org and look under Exhibitions. That's all for this week's Arts and Entertainment. I'm Hannah Lounsbury, Jake and Lindsay. After the big Super Bowl, with the win of the Patriots, Laura Hickman has your sports next. 
It was definitely an exciting weekend with the Patriots winning the Super Bowl. Here's Laura Hickman with more. Days after the big Super Bowl Sunday, celebration is still in full swing. The Patriots, who won 28-24 Sunday against the Seattle Seahawks, celebrated Wednesday on the streets of Boston. The parade to celebrate the Patriots' win featured the whole NFL team in the Super Bowl trophy. Quarterback Tom Brady brought his son for the excitement while they rode the famous Boston Duck Boats. Brady had a Super Bowl record of 37 passes and threw four touchdowns. Super Bowl 49 also had a historic night with more than 114 million viewers watching the Patriots beat the Seahawks. This made the show the most watched televised event in U.S. history. The Thunder faced New Orleans Wednesday night without, Thun without Durant and in the lineup they had Russell Westbrook and he continued to help the Thunder roll. Despite losing the last four out of six games, Westbrook saw the opportunity to score big. The Thunder capitalized in the paint, scoring 66-46 against New Orleans. The Thunder won the game with a score of 102-91. Westbrook ended the night at 45 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists. It's the biggest rivalry that OBU has ever had, and it is currently in full swing tonight. The Holy Wars mean something more than just Bison and Cavaliers. It means pride within Shawnee. As of late, OBU has dominated the series, despite losing one to St. Greg's last year. With the Bison ranked in the top 10 once again this year, it should be a nice ending to the Holy Wars rivalry at the Noble Complex. The Bison men are led in scoring by Ty Allen, who is averaging almost 20 points a game. The top scorer out of the Lady Bison is Zabeda Arame, who averages about 12 points a game. The Cavaliers are led by Marty Wilkerson, who has averaged 21 points a game, and the Lady Cavaliers are led by Stacey Lee, who averages 14 points a game. Both OBU men and the Cavaliers are 6-4 and four in the SAC. The Lady Bison are 7-3 and three in the SAC, while the Lady Cavaliers are 1-9. and nine. The Shawnee Wolves, who are currently 8-11, and 11, pull out a win Tuesday against Guthrie. The Wolves forced 25 turnovers, 12 just in the second quarter. Jackson Winrow led the team with a game high of 20, 20 points, 9 in the last period, giving the Wolves the lead for the final win. This is the only the second of the last nine games the Wolves have seen victory. The Shawnee Wolves will take on Hera next Tuesday. That's all for sports. Lindsay and Jake, back to you. Thank you, Laura. A lot of little girls don't expect their dads to be their day-to-day -day stylists when they need a ponytail or braids. But as for a Colorado single dad and Navy veteran Greg Wickerst struggled with fixing two-year-old Izzy's hair, he decided against everything to enroll in cosmetology school. Winkhurst said any mom and dad could do it. It just takes the time to learn each style. Mm -hmm. he, he currently works at Intellect College, but heads to the cosmetology class after work, hoping to break the gender stereotypes for parents. That's all for News 30 this week. Make sure to tune in next Thursday at 6.30. Also, be watching for exclusive reports and interviews, YouTube, and what the news team is up to on Twitter and Facebook. Have a good night.